Hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, this is Dr. Prashant Shukla and I am here with a set of video presentations in which I am going to demonstrate how to do a proper cortical aspiration using Simcoe bi-manual and coaxial irrigation handpieces and also different ways to implant different intraocular lenses PMMA and foldable lenses. This uh, whole video is, is set of uh, many surgeries which have been cut and edited to the desired videos and here I am doing a small rexis first using uh, cystitome and uh, micro capsule rexis forceps. After the mini rexis the simco is used through side port 23 gauge to decompress the bag and this is how the nucleus is removed using the phaco sandwich technique. After removing the nucleus, a lot of cortical matter which is there. First, the Simco is used just to irrigate out the cortex from the anterior chamber and the capsular bag. There is no aspiration which has been used now, only the water jet is used. And now the same Simco is used through the side port. When we use this 23 gauge Simco cannula through the, through the side port, the chamber is formed very nicely. And the cortex from the bag is removed. Now a thick sheet of epinucleus and cortex is left and now using the same Simco cannula through the main port and the fluid jet, jet is directed below the cortex and when the fluid jet is directed below the cortex, the cortex comes out without any need of any aspiration. The rest of the cortex is removed through the Simco cannula through the side port. When we use the Simco cannula from the main port, the chamber usually collapses and carries a greater risk of a PCR. So it's always a good idea to use the Simco from the side port. In this case, I am implanting a PMMA lens and this is how the three piece PMMA lens goes into the eye. The haptic is directed to go below the entry capsular margin. Now is the time to dial the other haptic. The ball Sinsky is used and the optic haptic junction is then held and the lens is dialed in the capsular bag. This is another case I am demonstrating a bimanual prolapse of the nucleus from the capsular bag through a small pupil. Two Sinsky hooks are used to just wheel out the nucleus out of the capsular bag and this is how the nucleus comes in the AC. Same phaco sandwich technique is then used to just remove the nucleus. Here also, here I am demonstrating the use of bimanual irrigation aspiration. Just the irrigation handpiece is used to just flush out all the cortex by pressing the posterior lip of the wound. With the flow of the water jet, majority of the cortex, loose cortex comes out just by irrigation. Now I am using both irrigation and aspiration. If you have got a very good scleral tunnel, you can use bimanual irrigation aspiration in small incision cataract surgeries. Here the bottle height is about 90 centimeters and vacuum is 300. The aspiration handpiece just catches the cortex and just pulls, pulls it into the center and then it is aspirated with good foot, foot control movements and cautious use of vacuum. We can have a very stable anterior chamber when we use IA handpieces in SICS. Bimanual irrigation aspiration is a very good tool to remove the subincisional cortex as well because you, you can always switch hands and remove the cortex with great ease without the risk of chamber collapsing or any chances of catching the posterior capsule. Now the last bit of cortex is removed. We, we usually hold the anterior lip of the cortex, not the posterior lip. In this case, I am implanting a semi-preloaded intraocular lens hydrophobic from Appa Swami, no financial interest. 
the lens has already been loaded in into the cartridge and we just have to put the viscoelastic and remove the um, knob just pulling lifting up the entry lip of the wound slowly we inject the intraocular lens into the eye directing the haptic into the capsular bag after the lens is in the eye now we use a sinski and hold the optic haptic junction and gently dial the other haptic also into the capsular bag now is the time to remove the viscoelastic the same irrigation hand piece is used to go below the intraocular lens and just with the irrigation fluid the viscoelastic which is behind the intraocular lens is just flushed out of the eye you should always make sure that all the viscoelastic is removed to avoid any post operative intraocular uh, pressure spikes in the coming post operative days now is the time to remove the viscoelastic from the entry chamber now both the hand pieces are used to remove the viscoelastic which is sticking onto the anterior surface of the intraocular lens and in the in the ac settings are same the vacuum is 300 it is a venturi based machine and the bottle height is kept at 90 cm here i am using a y shaped instrument just to check whether the haptics are into the capsular bag and we are not left with any cortex which gives a surprise the next day this is another case the nucleus is already prolapsed into the ac and the same phaco sandwich technique is used to just remove the nucleus out of the capsular bag here again bimanual irrigation aspiration is used just to flush out all the cortex on the capsular bag and the anterior chamber the the probe is just moved when the and the water jet is directed towards the epineucleus and the cortex to just flush out whatever loose cortex is there and i am using the other aspiration hand piece as well vacuum being used is same 300 and bottle height is 90 with proper foot control movements the cortex is held and just it is pulled towards the center and then aspirated we usually avoid the aspiration of the cortex at the periphery first it is pulled into this into the center safe zone and then it is aspirated i feel whenever anybody any residents or st uh, the students in training have an access to bimanual irrigation aspiration it is a good idea to use them this technique for all their ssis cases bimanual irrigation aspiration is a very good tool to remove the cortex with greater safety bimanual irrigation aspiration they are small and they can go with through a mvr opening of 23 or 20 gauge we don't have to make a very big side port for that just as we have to do for simco see how nicely the cortex is just pulled in in, in the center and then aspirated and it is also very easy to remove the sub incisional cortex which is slightly tougher using simco but we should all be uh, well versed and we should all be um, uh, we should all have an access to all the instruments like simco and other instruments here i am implanting a three piece pmma lens just note how we hold the lens and gently push it into the eye the haptic goes below the entry capsular margin and now here i am just holding the optic haptic junction and dialing it through the hole slowly and the lens is dialed into into the capsular bag now is the time to remove the 
cortical matter whatever is left and the viscoelastic which has been pushed into the eye for the implantation of the lens. Here again the water jet of the irrigation handpiece is used to just flush out the viscoelastic from the anterior part of the intraocular lens and behind the intraocular lens. This is a very good tool to just uh, flush out whatever debris, uh, cortex is left and there are less chances of any thing being, being cached like if you use irrigation and aspiration both we can uh, the beginners can catch the posterior capsule also and um, it's a good idea to just irrigate first whatever viscoelastic and, and other debris are there in the AC and then use both the irrigation and aspiration. This is a case of echo emulsification in which I am using a coaxial irrigation handpiece and there is just one port to aspirate. First, I direct the port towards the subincisional cortex and the moment I catch the subincisional cortex, I would rotate the uh, irrigation aspiration handpiece and make the port face towards the cornea. In a moment you will see. First I am trying to just remove the cortex from the sub incisional area and the game of using the coaxial handpiece is just the rotation movements of the hands. So always a good idea to aspirate the cortex with the port facing towards the cornea and not facing towards the posterior capsule. First time just trying to remove whatever the cortex is there in the furnaces and bring the cortex in the center and while I am aspirating with vacuum of about 350, I am purposely trying to face the port towards the cornea and not towards the posterior capsule. This is how you can use a coaxial illumina IA handpiece uh, without any risk. This is how we load a foldable hydrophobic intraocular lens. Isquelastic is instilled into the butterfly cartridge and the lens is then placed in the proper orientation. With the help of Macpherson, the lens is positioned and the cartridge is closed. Here again, gently we, we would just press the plunger of the cartridge and the haptic is directed towards the capsular bag below the anterior margin. Here again the optic haptic jun junction is held with the Sinsky and the intraocular lens is dialed into the capsular bag. Now is the time to remove the viscoelastic from the eye first. The irrigation aspiration coaxial handpiece is uh, goes behind the intraocular lens and purposely the port is facing towards the intraocular lens and not towards the posterior capsule because if we face the uh, port towards the posterior capsule there are high chances of catching it. The vacuum being used is about 450, bottle height is kept at 100 centimeters. Now is the time to remove the viscoelastic from the anterior part of the intraocular lens. Normally with these hydrophobic lenses the HPMC which we normally use sticks very much on the surface of the intraocular lens. You should make sure to remove all the viscoelastic. This is how we use the coaxial handpiece. Here is one more case in which I am demonstrating the use of coaxial handpiece and the thick epinucleus in the cortex is removed through this handpiece. The, the, the basic goal of using this ha handpiece is the one has to be well versed of the rotation of the hand movements and first the 
the, the port is directed towards the cortex and then it is rotated towards the cornea and the aspiration at the higher vacuum is done while the port is facing you. Again the cortex which is in the fornices is just pulled out and aspirated in the central safe zone. Care is taken that we only catch the cortex and not the intracapsular margin. Here we are left with removal of subincisional cortex and here I am using a biomanual irrigation setup to just remove the subincisional cortex with great safety. Sometimes it is also difficult to use the subincisional cortex which, which is there in the furnaces using the coaxial handpiece. So biomanual comes handy in this situation. The biomanual handpiece can go very safely even beyond the intracapsular margin up to the furnaces which the coaxial handpiece normally is not very safe to take under direct visualization whatever cortex is there in the subincisional area is then removed using the biomanual education and aspiration. Again in this case we are implanting a foldable single piece spheric hydrophobic intraocular lens and once the haptic is in the, into the capsular bag the other haptic is also gently dialed in the capsular bag. Similarly viscoelastic is removed using coaxial handpiece first all the viscoelastic which is in the capsular bag behind the intraocular lens is removed and then the lens is gradually tapped and whatever viscoelastic is there in the entry chamber is then removed. I hope you liked this small video presentation and I hope it's going to help you develop better surgical skills and thank you so much and I will be posting newer videos in coming days. Thank you so much.